Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here at the Hurricane Allocan discussion for June 28th, 2020, recorded around 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a look here at the latest sea surface temperature anomalies last updated yesterday, June the 27th, you continue to notice this very persistent area of cooling out here in the ENSO uh, regions with anomalies in the Nino 3.4 area running about a full two degrees to uh, a full one to two degrees Celsius below the long-term average. This will continue to, to promote the idea that this will likely head towards a, a cool neutral or a La Nina Bay state by the time we enter into fall of 2020 and the winter of 2020 into 2021. There has been some warming in this area over the last several days or so from a westerly wind burst that has been occurring across that area. Not significantly enough though to wane all of this cooling and undo any significant cooling effect that's been going on over the last several months or so, especially in the month of May and June. Uh, the, the certainly the, the early to mid part of June, we have this very significant easterly wind burst that's really been kicking up all of this, uh, you know, upwelling and not allowing for any warmer anomalies to uh, pop up through here. Conversely, in the Atlantic Basin, we continue to see persistent warming of the main development region of the Atlantic with this positive Phase 1 AMO classical horseshoe shape signature. This will continue to suggest that the Atlantic Basin will continuously warm uh, throughout the next several weeks or so. Although we may see an area of cooling, especially off here the uh, to the east and northeast of the Cape Verde Islands, the Cabo Verde Islands, however you want to say it. Uh, due to the strong trade winds and Saharan air events that have been coming off there as of recent that will likely cool off some of this area, but not significantly enough at all as we continue to head towards a very favorable look for the Atlantic hurricane season this year. Conversely, taking a look here at the uh, the upper ocean heat content, rather, this is taking a look, uh, this was updated as of this morning. The 28th, obviously, and you continue to notice that here in the southwestern Atlantic Basin, we continue to see this area of really high upper ocean heat content values. This is your latent heat release potential, your, you know, however you want to look at, look at it, your warmer water at depth, and this really matters for the point that if tropical cyclones come in here, especially in the, the southwestern Atlantic, the Caribbean, south, uh, you know, even the, the southern main de development region, that allows these tropical cyclones, these thunderstorms, you know, to take advantage of that environment. And they can really intensify, tropical cyclones can really intensify if all else is, is you know, equal and favorable uh, in this environment, especially in the Caribbean. So this certainly has my attention for that reason, because these values getting up here and towards the reds and oranges are way out here in the upper distribution here, really the upper third of the scale, the upper echelon here across portions of the Caribbean and the extreme southeastern Gulf of Mexico, even out here in the southwestern Atlantic, the Bahamas, out here towards the Lesser Antilles, the, the Northern Islands there. And even out here in the southwest, in, in the Southern Main Development Region, we continue to notice this very persistent area of warming and the upper ocean heat content numbers rising in this environment. And that will only continue to, to occur and kind of reiterate itself over the next while, over the next several weeks to months. As this intertropical convergence zone begins to lift further to the north, we get a lot more warming in this environment. The trade winds relax. The Saharan air events relax. And eventually, you know, here within the next several weeks, it does look like there's going to be a fairly favorable window of opportunity coming up here across the Atlantic Basin. So certainly we have to keep our eyes on that as we go forward with time. Looking at the actual sea surface temperatures for the tropical land, it comes from tropicaltippets.com. Initialized as of 1 o'clock this morning, you continue to notice our 26 and a half degree isotherm. This is basically where the conditions support tropical cyclones in the thermodynamic environment in the water temperature sense. And you notice pretty much out here across the main development region, even past here, we've been talking about this 50 west line for the, the last while here. Uh, but again, as of late, we've seen this expand further on out back here uh, towards about 40 west and then eventually creeping up from the south as well. So we're starting to see the favorability pattern arise and it's starting to transition from, you know, where we were back a couple of months ago from an unfavorable base state into a more favorable base state. And we'll show more evidence of that occurring here in a little bit. 
at the whole North Atlantic Basin, you notice the Southwestern Atlantic is just a big heat dome, basically, in the thermodynamic sense, with water temperatures ranging from about 30 Celsius to about 20, uh, 28 Celsius across most of the Southwestern Atlantic. The Gulf Stream is very warm for this time of the year. Uh, and, you know, it's only a matter of time before something comes along and is able to take advantage of that environment and really get its act together uh, going out here in the southwestern Atlantic or the Gulf Stream areas out here. And then in the eastern Pacific and southeastern Pacific regions, again, water temperatures about 29, 30 Celsius, so very warm out here in the eastern Pacific Basin as well. And as we go out throughout time, this is only expected to warm even further so. Now, taking a look here, this is from the College Page website, the GO-16 Visible Satellite. And we're taking a look here at the wider shot here, looking at some of the Eastern Pacific and most of the Atlantic Basin. You notice our tropical wave in here, which has now been designated Invest 96L by the National Hurricane Center. We'll talk about that here in just a little bit. But we do have this tropical wave that's in here. You notice how it's very well bundled in the atmosphere. Its energy is trying to consolidate. Very little thunderstorm development, though, near a concentrated vort max, a, a vorticity maximum in the lower part of the atmosphere. Very little convection associated with it. Very anemic looking because of this big dry Saharan air event and this just dry mid-level air per se that's in the atmosphere really preventing much development at all so it's not really going to get anywhere as this generally heads off towards the north and east here or, or north and west here over the next several days or so you notice this is the intertropical convergence zone that's down here and you notice how this little piece of energy is kind of broken off broken off from the intertropical convergence zone and the monsoonal areas down here this will continue to break off and detach from the zone and be on its own here over the next several days or so before finally getting tearn apart by a lot of the strong upper level winds that are blowing across here at about 40 to 50 knots or so as this tropical wave will eventually move into very hostile conditions most of the other Atlantic Basin, it is pretty quiet, maybe an area of disturbance that might get its act together out here, but not really looking too great at this at this moment in time. The dry Saharan air event right now that's still occurring across most of the southeast, the Caribbean, the Lesser Antilles, the Windwards, the islands out there, Barbados, still getting some dry, dusty air, especially out here in the southeastern United States and in, in the Gulf Coast states. That dry, stable air has been kind of hanging around throughout the last several days and is only expected to kind of hang around for a while longer. And in the Eastern Pacific Basin, once again, we have uh, Dor uh, Boris, which actually became post-tropical last night. It is well gone out here in the Central Pacific area of responsibility now. And this bigger monsoonal area over here across the Eastern Pacific may try to once again become more active over the next several days or so, but not really watching for much potential. Only one little area with about a 30% chance, but no significant land impacts for the Cabo San Lucas Resort areas, the Gulf of California, the Baja, Central America, or Mexico. No significant deep concerns at this moment in time for those regions at all. Just taking a look at our main development region system in the Atlantic Basin, only, again, a very small chance of development 20% over the next five days or so as this will generally head off towards the north and west. Again, no deep concerns for the islands at all. Again, this is probably not going to even make it out to the next 48 hours. It's probably going to weaken. We'll probably see uh, this kind of fall apart, this vorticity maximum, really just begin to, to be shredded apart and fall apart here uh, over the next uh, 48 to 72 hours or so. But needless to say, again, you know, there might be a, a secondary piece of energy over here that might make its way into the islands that might just bring some shower and thunderstorm activity. No significant development of this system is expected during the next five days. And over in the Northwestern Atlantic Basin, we also have another area that uh, there's tr this area of low pressure that's expected to uh, kind of just barrel its way down here over the next several days or so across portions of the Atlantic 
southeastern states is eventually going to uh, be out here into the Gulf Stream in the open uh, north northwestern Atlantic Basin. This is likely not to develop. There is just uh, there is still some drier even this far to the north. Upper level winds are too strong right now. And most modeling does not suggest really much, but again, this is no land threat as well as this will generally stay and head off towards the north and east and stay out to sea at this current time. So no significant concerns to land at the time for any of those two systems. Now taking a look here at the 850 millibar vorticity, the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. Again, once you start getting into these reds and whites, you're getting that very strong cyclonic uh, spin with height there. Again, this is our little tropical disturbance down here, Invest 96L out here in the main development region. Very impressive, but the structure, kind of the backbone structure to it is not very impressive at all. Again, this is our little detached system right here embedded within this larger monsoonal uh, setup over here. Again, this will continue to detach and kind of pull away. You'll start to see how this kind of separates itself. And this lobe of energy will head off towards the north and west here over the next several days or so in this general vicinity. No significant land concerns. Do not expect this to develop at any time soon because there's just too much going across the board for this and it's going heavily against the climatology for this time of the year as well. So no significant deep concerns for that region as well. And out here in the Northwestern Atlantic Basin, nothing really taking shape across here at all. Now, if we, we wanted to take a, a kind of a relook at this, this is coming off the European Ensemble 850 millibar zonal wind anomalies coming from weathermodels.com. These bluish and greens here are your easterly winds, and the reddish is your westerly winds going down with height here. This is July 11th down here, and this is July or June 27th, rather. And this roughly correlates to the main development region of the Atlantic. This is correlating to this part of the world out here in the eastern Pacific. You notice how all of this easterly wind is going to be kicking up across the uh, the western Pacific and the eastern Pacific basins over the next several weeks or so. That's going to only uh, favor additional strengthening of this uh, cooler anomalies over here in the Nino 3 and 3.4 regions. That's going to really upwell more and more cooler water and not really allow for any westerly winds or any sort of warming in that area. Conversely, in the Atlantic Basin, we'll continue to see or begin to see a westerly wind burst set up across this region, lessening the trade winds across here, inducing more background cyclonic spin in the atmosphere, and that will only continue to amplify and favor Atlantic tropical cyclone development uh, towards the month of July, towards the mid and latter parts of July. That will certainly help to favor that. And this is just another way of looking at it. This is the CFS, this the climate forecast system, 850 millibar zonal wind anomalies. And again, this these reddish colors here indicate your westerly winds. That's indicating your the, the purplish kind of colors are indicating your easterly winds. This is valid for the whole month of July. You notice all of these westerly winds across here. Again, that's only going to amplify and favor the Atlantic Basin as we head in towards the month of July. And this comes from Eric Webb over on Twitter and from weathermodels.com. This is taking a look at the European control model for the 200 millibar velocity potential anomaly. This right here, your reddish and, and kind of orangish colors, these are indicating your sinking air in the atmosphere. This bluish, uh, you know, bluish green color is representing your upward moving air, your rising air favoring more convection. And you notice how that is just very prevalent across Africa and the Western Atlantic basins, the Western Maine development region. Uh, this ends on July the 13th and this starts on July 8th. So this is over a five day time frame initialized as of this morning or as of last night, actually. But this is very favorable for Atlantic tropical cyclone activity. And it's only going to be very interesting to see how this generally progresses as we go on throughout time because this is just about as favorable as you can get it to be in the Atlantic Basin as we go on throughout time. So very important to understand that the signs of favorability are starting to come into play now, of course, with 96L, with our other Northwestern Atlantic system. 
The times are changing. The area of favorability is now shifting from it being in the northwestern Atlantic and the subtropical regions out across this area over here into the deep tropics out across this area. And it's only a matter of time before we do get something that actually develops because this is going to really amplify these tropical waves as they come off. And that is going to be the key for the upcoming hurricane season. I do believe so. Again, Taking a look here at the GFS forecast, this is the 850 millibar vorticity from tropicaltippets.com, the 12Z model run. Just real quickly here again, this is your little system down here, 96L, no real significant concerns to land at all. There might be some tropical cyclone activity here in the eastern Pacific basin, and I do believe that the eastern Pacific will pick up here over the next several weeks as we get yet another convectively coupled Kelvin wave to pass the Eastern Pacific Basin, which will favor tropical cyclone formation there at the beginning, and then eventually move back into the Atlantic Basin, where, again, this will favor more of that rising air and deeper convection, these stronger tropical waves, and that, I do believe, is the time to watch out for in the Atlantic Basin. Now, currently... This is the 12Z European model. Again, no significant concerns in the Atlantic Basin at all as we go on throughout the next several days. This is our detached 96L out here. No significant concerns to land impacts at all. So nothing really significantly to impact land here in the Atlantic Basin over the next several days or so. The main story continues to be the drier air and the shear across the regions for now. The Eastern Pacific will likely increase in a convection and activity during the next several weeks or so as a convectively coupled Kelvin wave passes through there. But otherwise than that, the Atlantic Basin remains closed for business at this current time, but the window of opportunity is coming up very quickly for the Atlantic Basin. Now's the time to prepare where we don't have a major hurricane directly making landfall right now. But again, it's only a matter of time. It only takes one storm. Now's the time to prepare. So hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Make sure to subscribe and enable notifications for our YouTube channel. Make sure to go follow me on Twitter. Links will be in the description down below. Stay tuned to our latest uh, upcoming camera system projects and more. Hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. I am Michael Romali, and I'll see you guys back here then tomorrow afternoon. Stay safe, everyone.